The rather shaky footage taken here was back in June 2014, long before the Elizabeth line even existed. Fast forward to 2022, and not only have my videography skills improved, but the Elizabeth line has also come a long way too. As, on today, the 6th of November 2022, the Elizabeth line has linked all three of its branches together to create one service. Since opening on the 24th of May 2022, the Elizabeth line has rapidly become an important part of London life, connecting both commuters and leisure travellers alike, both in and out of the city. Getting to this stage has been rather difficult, with many challenges and delays faced along the way. However, I'm very pleased to be amongst one of the first people to ride the full route between Heathrow and the Crossrail Core. And with that being said, join me as we get this show on the rails and see just how Crossrail will change the life of both Londoners and non-Londoners alike. Our journey today begins at Heathrow Terminal 5, which, as the name suggests, forms part of London Heathrow Airport. Excluding the Crossrail core, Heathrow Terminal 5 is one of the line's newest stations, which opened on the 27th of March 2008 in conjunction with the main airport. From here, we'll be catching the very first eastbound service through the Crossrail core in order to link with Abbey Wood direct through central London from the airport. So, let's go! Being located in underground tunnels, we'll have to take several escalators in order for us to reach the platforms. As can be seen here, the platforms are just below us there, as can be shown from the blue light in the background. Excluding the Piccadilly line, all services to and from the station are provided by either the Elizabeth line or the Heathrow Express, operating between London Paddington and Heathrow Airport. That is, until today, as you can now catch a direct train using the Elizabeth line through central London and not having to change at Paddington anymore. Just before I discuss the routings for today, as well as the next phase of the Elizabeth line, let me just get my ticket and get into the platforms. Even though you can travel to and from Heathrow Airport using an Oyster or contactless payment card, I would strongly advise against this, purely because any journey that involves travelling to or through Zone 1 is considered to be a peak time fare. Trains from Heathrow Terminal 5 either depart at platforms 3 and 4, with platforms 1 and 2 being the Piccadilly line platforms. But as our train's not here yet, now's a good time for us to discuss the next phase of the Elizabeth line in more detail. Most of you viewing this video will be familiar with this format of the Elizabeth line map, which involves all three sections remaining separate. You have to walk from Liverpool Street on the Shenfield branch and Paddington on the Heathrow and Reading branches to the central section, otherwise known as the Abbey Wood branch, in order to traverse the full route. From the 6th of November 2022, this will no longer be the case, as you will now be able to traverse the full route through the Crossrail core, and the map will look something a little more like this. That being said, however, services will run every 10 minutes now from the Abbey Wood branch, connecting to Heathrow and Reading in the west, while services from Shenfield in the east will now link to the Crossrail core and terminate at Paddington, again running every 10 minutes. Both services are increased to every five minutes during peak time hours. The full route is expected to open no later than May 2023, with Shenfield services terminating at Reading and Heathrow services terminating at Abbey Wood. Whitechapel and Paddington are expected to be the major hubs of the Crossrail core. Whitechapel for services in the east between Abbey Wood and Shenfield and Paddington for services along the western branch between Reading and Heathrow Airport. And here comes our train which is a Class 345 Adventure train, which was built by Bombardier Transportation in Derby between 2015 and 2019, specifically for the Crossrail project, costing a total of £1 billion. There are 70 of these nine carriage trains, each of which can carry up to 1,500 passengers, which, to me, is just incredible. Right, it's now time for us to board and take a look around. On each nine carriage train, there are three carriages which have a Metro-style seating arrangement six of which have a mixture of a metro-style seating layout as well as 2 plus 2 metro-style seating. I usually tend to go for the 2 plus 2 metro seating as it does offer better views and a much better travel experience. Before we head off, let's have a quick recap as to the features of the train. Whilst the seats are ergonomically designed, they severely lack padding, meaning they're rather firm and hard. I wouldn't want to have one of these on the full route from Reading to Shenfield. Foldable armrests are included at the end and the middle of each seat. 
There is also an armrest at the end, which doesn't fold. The metro seating is again firm and hard, although unlike the aisle seats, the armrests are unable to be moved. Foldable tip-out seats are present towards the end of each carriage, which is handy for those with reduced mobility. Grab poles and handles are also present throughout the train, given the metro-style nature of the Elizabeth line. One thing I did notice was that the maps from the Corps opening in May weren't updated for the extension in November, which can be a bit confusing for commuters looking to change. We still have approximately 10 minutes to go before we depart for Abbey Wood this morning, but I'd just like to take this opportunity to point out just how satisfying it is to see Paddington no longer being the only destination displayed from Heathrow Airport. This is because I've always felt like, despite its size and complexity, Heathrow Airport has always been rather isolated in terms of rail travel, especially when compared to other airports such as Gatwick and Luton. Hopefully now, with the Elizabeth Line linking through all three sections, Heathrow Airport will be much better served across the capital and beyond throughout the rest of the country. Heading back onto the train, I'm now going to go take my seat. I'm not going to discuss our route today, as I've already discussed this previously when going through the Elizabeth Line maps. So, without further ado, it's now time for us to head off to Abbey Wood, and let's get rolling! Heathrow Central for Terminals 2 and 3 is our first station call, a mere 5 minutes after leaving Terminal 5. A point to note is that Terminal 1 was also served here until 2015, when it closed in favour of an expanded Terminal 2 and the fact it only had a mere 20 flights a day by June that year. Transfers between terminals at Heathrow are free of charge, however, leaving the tunnels means that the tickets are restricted to either the Elizabeth Line or Heathrow Express from this point onwards. The maximum speed in the tunnels is 80 miles per hour and has amazing 4G connectivity, I must add. That is something I was really surprised at, especially considering the main Elizabeth Line core doesn't have any internet connectivity whatsoever. Having left the Heathrow tunnels, we can see the full length of our train, which is much longer than the Class 360 Desiro trains that used to operate on this route, which were 5 carriages long and had 20 metre body shells. The Class 345s feature 23 metre body shells, although they do lack in other features, notably lack of toilets. Our next station call, and our first station call outside of the Heathrow Tunnels, is Hayes and Harlington Station, which also provides a link with Great Western Railway services along the Thames Valley, which are semi-fast between London Paddington and Didcot Parkway. This station is where the Elizabeth Line branch to Reading splits from the Heathrow branch. South Hall is our next station stop, and not only does it house the South Hall Railway Centre, a non-publicised railway heritage centre partly operated by West Coast Railways and Locomotive Services Limited, it also, the suburb itself has a rather large Indian community, which is emphasised by the Punjabi signage located in and out of the station. Two stops later, we call at Ealing Broadway, a major interchange with both GWR semi-fast to Didcot Parkway and London Underground District and Central Lines, the latter of which the Elizabeth Line partially relieves, owing to it following the similar route. As can be seen, some construction work still has yet to be complete for the station's renovation, but otherwise it's more or less there and really does look fantastic when you get inside the station and properly visit it. Our final station call before we head into the Crossrail core is Acton Main Line, which, as it has previously, is only served by Elizabeth Line services along the Heathrow branch. This, combined with its proximity from the main suburb itself, has consequently made Acton Main Line the Elizabeth Line's least used station. As we leave Acton Main Line, we only have a mere five minutes to go before we reach the Royal Oak Portal, 
which will take us into the Elizabeth Line Corps as its first revenue earning service, eastbound. We do this at the train's maximum speed of 90 miles per hour, although we are currently going at 70 owing to the adverse weather. GWR's North Pole Depot, where its IETs are maintained, is to the right, with the company's former Old Oak Common Depot, where the Elizabeth Line Class 345s are maintained, being located to the left. Not only are we now entering the Westbourne Park sidings, where the Class 345s are temporarily stabled, we are also skipping Paddington altogether, which to me is just completely weird, as I'm so used to going in and out of Paddington Mainline Station that it just feels like second nature to me now. The Class 345 to the right is one of the first, if not the first, to have completed the service from Shenfield through the course section. As I've mentioned previously, Shenfield services are temporarily terminating at Paddington, with them being extended to Reading by May 2023 at the latest. Something else to note is that eastbound services through the Royal Oak Portal are timetabled to wait at Westbourne Park carriage sidings for around 7 minutes. This wasn't the case with our train, but I'm not sure if that's because it's a Heathrow service or if it's to do with the fact that it's the first passenger service to go through. If you do know this, please do let me know in the comments below, as I am rather curious. This is also a good time to point out that through the core, the maximum speed that the Class 345s can go at is 60 miles per hour. Paddington Low Level is our next station call, and our first calling point in the Crossrail Core. This is also the former terminus of the Western Branch services, and shockingly, a large amount of people are lighted here, proving that old habits well and truly die hard. We then go on to stop at the newly opened Bond Street, which opened two weeks before, on the 24th of October. I did go and visit on the open day, however, I was a bit slow with the gift bags, so I was rather disappointed at that. Nevertheless, Bond Street is undoubtedly one of my favourite stations on the course section, notably due to its architectural designs and patterns. Have you visited the new Bond Street station yet? Please do let me know your thoughts in the comments below. You can also alight here as an interchange for the Jubilee and Central lines, as well as the southern side of Oxford Street. We then go on to call at Farringdon after Tottenham Court Road, which is where you can alight for the District, Hammersmith and City and Metropolitan lines, as well as the Elizabeth Line's north to south counterpart, Thameslink. A fun fact is that now that the Elizabeth Line serves Heathrow Airport, Farringdon is now an interchange for three of the UK's main airports, the other two being Gatwick and Luton. Liverpool Street follows after Farringdon, which is the previous terminus of the Elizabeth Line Shenfield branch. Nowadays, what you have to do is, you have to change at Whitechapel for onward connections to Shenfield via Stratford. This brings us nicely into our last stop on the Crossrail Core, which is Whitechapel. A fun fact about Whitechapel as well, is that much like Southall, there is a large South Asian community in the area, notably Bengalis, and consequently, there is now Bengali signage in front and around the station, which I think is pretty cool as well as it shows just how multicultural the areas which the Elizabeth Line serves just really are. At the end of the video, I've included some bonus footage of travelling up the Shenfield branch through the Pudding Mill Lane portal, so don't quite jump off at Abbey Wood just yet, if I know what you're thinking. We have now moved on to the Abbey Wood branch, as evidenced by our next station call of Canary Wharf. The station serves one of the largest financial districts in the UK, and if you look closely at the escalators, you may notice a reference to the name and a certain yellow bird. Our penultimate intermediate stop is Custom House, where you can interchange with the DLR Beckton to Tower Gateway branch, as well as London's XL Exhibition Centre. This is also one of two stations on the Abbey Wood branch to be above ground, the other being Abbey Wood itself. Consequently, the doors open manually here as there are no platform screen doors to enable automatic operation. The section of track we're on now is part of what was formerly the North London Line branch to North Woolwich, which closed in 2006. This is owing to the opening of the DLR's Stratford International to Woolwich Arsenal service a few years later, which is essentially a duplicate service. This subsequently left this section to become part of the Elizabeth Line. The Tate and Lyle factory is located just outside the site of the former Silvertown station, with proposals being made to reopen the station as part of the Elizabeth Line in order to serve the nearby London City Airport. Re-entering the tunnels leads us into our final station of Woolwich, where you can alight for DLR and National Rail services from Woolwich Arsenal around a five minute walk away from here. 
Woolwich was not an original station that was planned to have been built, having been included as part of campaigns made by the local residents. As we pass Plumstead sidings, it's now time for a conclusion. Overall, I'm very happy the three branches are now linked together, as it was a pain to change between them before, even if it did get my steps in. This will be an absolute game changer, not only for travelling to Heathrow Airport from central London, but also for those living in east and west London to get between the two areas, as well as central London, which will be absolutely fantastic, especially considering I travelled from Heathrow Airport all the way to south east London in Zone 4 in just over an hour, which is really impressive. Well, anyways guys, that's it from me, and welcome to Abbey Wood. Next station, Abbey Wood, where this train terminates. See it, say it, sorted. And that's it. Welcome to Abbey Wood. I know what you're thinking. Yes, it is chucking it down. Not only that, but I did promise you some bonus footage. So well done for sticking around just to see it. That being said, we get it started by boarding 345001 back to Whitechapel. So let's go. Having arrived at Whitechapel, we now go from the westbound platform to the eastbound platform in order to catch a service to Shenfield via the Pudding Mill Lane portal to Stratford. Services along the Shenfield branch previously ran non-stop between Liverpool Street and Stratford. However, the new course section adds an additional intermediate stop at Whitechapel, which is really handy for the locals, as well as for interchanging between the four branches. The Pudding Mill Lane portal is no different to other sections of the core. The maximum speed is the same and there's no view outside as you'd imagine. However, it does bring us here, which is just outside of Stratford Station. This provides a link between the former Shenfield Metro and the Crossrail core, forming the Shenfield branch of the Elizabeth Line and linking with the Great Eastern Main Line towards Essex and Norfolk. The Queen Elizabeth Olympic Park, where the London 2012 Olympic Games were held, can be seen in the background. A major hub on the Great Eastern Main Line, Stratford provides vital links between London Underground, London Overground, DLR and National Rail Services on the Great Eastern and West Anglia Main Lines. Having seen 14 million exits in 2020-2021, Stratford is considered the busiest station in the UK by the ORR. You can also alight here for Westfield Stratford City. As we pass over the Ilford flyover, we can see some Class 379s, formerly used on the Stansted Express, and some Class 315s, which were formerly used on the Shenfield Metro and are now being used on Gidea Park Peak services out of Liverpool Street High Level, which are sitting in storage, both of which I've had a look at on this channel before. Ilford EMU Depot can be seen to the left, which is where the Elizabeth Line maintains its fleet of Class 345s on the Shenfield branch. London Overground Class 710s can also be maintained here, as can be seen to the left, as well as Greater Anglia's suburban fleet of Class 720s. Major refurbishment work is also undergone here, such as for the West Midlands Railway Class 172s. The depot is now operated by Alstom, following their takeover of Bombardier Transportation in 2021. Well, that brings my bonus footage to a close. Now that you've seen all the branches, what do you think of the Elizabeth Line? Please do let me know your thoughts in the comments below. But for now, welcome to Shenfield. Next station, Shenfield, where this train terminates. And that's that. On arrival into Shenfield, I really would like to thank you for coming along with me on this ride and sticking around until the end. If you did enjoy this video, please do give it a like as well as share it, as that really does help the channel to grow. If you're new to the channel and want to see more content such as this, why not consider subscribing as well as enabling notifications as I'm now uploading new videos every Friday at 5pm. Well, it's now time for me to head home on something a lot less purple and also a lot less modern. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.